Hello, everybody. My name's Carol Erger Fass, and I'm the exhibit curator here at the library. And I want to welcome you to today's reception and artist talk, uh, celebrating Nancy Moore's beautiful exhibit, um, Women Telling Stories. You might know, or might not know, that this was supposed to open in 2020. And we had all the signs printed, and everything was picked out. And um, we were going to install that fateful week in March when the whole world closed down. But not long after, Nancy uh, agreed to be the first artist that we featured in our online series, um, Artists in Residences, which Migs and I uh, developed as a response to the lockdown. And although it was probably a small consolation for Nancy, it launched a whole new era of um, COVID programming here at the library. So here we are more than three years later. Um, it was worth the wait. <laughs> Seeing all these works up close is just um, a really uplifting experience. So I also want to thank our art team for uh, helping to do everything from installing uh, to hosting the reception today. Um, and also the library staff who transformed uh, the library today from a dance floor to our talk. Um, and there are two other events I just wanted to mention uh, that you might be interested in. Um, June 6th at 2 p.m., Verso University launches its new uh, series on the Connecticut Art Trail. And then on June 14th uh, at 6 p.m., uh, there's a reception and artist talk with the painter and poet Charles Douthat. So thanks, everybody, for coming out. And I'll turn it over to Migs. Thanks, Carol. Thanks, everybody, for being here. This really is a good crowd. Hi, Nancy. Um, Actually, before we advance the slides, I just want to read. There's some prints in the gallery there in the in little bins, and they're the only ones, the pieces of work that I see that have writing on them. And there's one of a butterfly, and this to me spoke, speaks to almost all, every, all your work. So I'll just read. My colors will not be silent. My wings will not be still. I am woven into the fabric of every day. I am the thread that holds the earth together makes it whole with every fragile flutter, cherish me, keep the world safe for me so I can carry the future on my wings. Did you write that? I did. Uh, and the person who, <laughs> the couple who owns it are sitting right in this room. Um, it's, it's, in a, it's in a beautiful home in Ridgefield. And um, I actually on that, it's titled Thread, and I sewed on the paper. Um, so there's a thread through line there um, also. Yeah, well, that's beautiful. And the other ones, there's one with a snail and a crab and a community, and you write on those. So you I was writing a lot at the beginning. Yeah. Um, and then I stopped, but I'm thinking about starting again. I really like doing that, and they seem to resonate with people. The words resonate with people according to different times in their lives and different people that they're thinking about. So, um, yeah, I'm thinking about doing that again. Well, let's get moving here. If we can, where do I have to go? This way? I don't, there. Jennifer. Technology. <laughs> Maybe it went to sleep. I'm doing the, or it's not turned on. And I'll just use this opportunity okay. to say thank you, there you all go. for thank coming. You. Um, thank you. I, I feel so supported and. Um, and feel free to eat. I, I don't mind chewing or crinkling or any of that. Um, and so I used to read to children um, professionally, little ones who did a lot of that. And so it's fine with me. So go for it. Ah. So you want to talk about this lady, and which prompts a few questions, but you talk about it first. <laughs> well, sh this is called Second Nature. And I'm trying always to expand my palette. I don't work a lot with purple. And so I wanted to bring that into my work a little bit. And I'll be talking a lot about chameleons, but they're a theme in my work. Animals in general are. And this is an amalgam of a chameleon and a woman. It's part of this series, which is in that room. And I'm, uh, you'll see a lot of images here that are not in that room, because I wanted to make it interesting for you and worth your while to come here. And 
these, this is an unconventional woman series. So it's women who are not beautiful in the conventional sense. And you've probably read this in the bio if you were in that room, but I just wanted to play with ideas about beauty, inner beauty and substance and the package isn't always, the package may look great sometimes, but what's going on inside can be sad or a little crumbly. And what we do to shore ourselves up together as women, um, so we can move forward, it's fine. Well, just as a, to start yeah. off, because there's so many uh, familiar elements throughout, but um, obviously patterns, colors, but there's uh, dots appear a lot, like on your pants. <laughs> but there's a red dot. They don't appear on everything, but there's a lot of dotalism, if that's a word. Dotalism. Surat was a pointillist. You're a dotalist. I'm I a guess. dotist. <laughs> but is there a significance? Is it a sun? Is it a planet? Is it a just a thing? Well, the red dot is is um, true north. So it's, I'm big on our own inner guidance system. The fact that we, although we try to talk ourselves out of it a lot and we get a lot of exterior messaging about how we can't really trust what we're seeing or who we are, that we've got that inside us. And if we can just quiet all those other voices, including our own, it's there. And so the red dot is a lot about directionality and that knowing part. So that's what that dot is. Okay, well, we're gonna move on to this. This is another familiar theme, chameleons, which uh, I mean, they're just, just amazing creatures, but you've just embellished them to a point of being just, you know, this extravagant, I don't know, what a spiritual being. So what, what are they about? <laughs> Uh, yeah, this piece um, was one of my very early chameleons. I started out making chameleons and I called them self-portraits. Uh, because I think that women, um, and this may also be in that bio, I don't know what was in there and not, because I haven't read it in a while, but um, that women are especially good at shedding and growing new skin, depending on what we're asked to do. A lot of times we're asked to blend in, we're, uh, we're told to be quiet, um, and then sometimes we just really want to stand out and that can be our urge and that could be, and that is our right. And just the whole kind of metamorphic aspect of us and how great that is. So it was all chameleons for a while, long story about how I just even started painting in bright color because I was a book editor for 40, just about 40 years. and. Um, I was painting on the side, around the edges, which so many of us do, so many of us do what we love around the edges of what we have to do. Although I loved being a book editor, I loved it. But anyway, so I'm digressing, but so the chameleon came out and I just never looked back. I just kept going with chameleons. So there are more. Well, then there's a couple more. Um, this is called Life Force and you can see the, the dots are, the dot, she's, they've breached the wall, so they're just And that just that whole idea of being, being part of nature and, and how what we're seeing is, it's what we're seeing, but there's so much more we're not seeing, and just about noticing. And another one. And this, the yeah, this, this piece just got sold, and it's, it's in, Reading, and it's called Burst, and butterflies are also a lot in my work, and my mother, Pearl, the inimitable Pearl, loved, um, loved, loved butterflies, and she, so she kind of crept in here and said, we need some butterflies, and just the idea of that whole thing about the outline of something and what's what's in there and how we can play with that. Now this, I mean, I, before you start, I just, there's an upside down, an E, what's the significance of uh, upside down? The upside down bird. Um, that happened because I sold, it's called Shaman's Talking 2. Shaman's Talking 1, the bird was right side up and it sold quickly, it was a big painting and it sold quickly and I missed it. 
And it was this, I was getting into shaman, the whole idea of wisdom in animals and, and in women. And um, so when I was painting this one, I was, I just start with a really bare outline, pencil outline. That's what I start with. And then I just go from there. And it's pretty much terror and fear the whole way through until I kind of feel like, oh, this does not suck. So with this one, the, the head came in, in a, at a strange angle. And I thought, why am, she's a shaman. This is a shaman. So let's put a lady's head on her. This was one of the first. And she can keep her chameleon body. And let's just make that bird upside down. And let's just have them be in conversation that way. So that was me tweaking something. Yeah, in our interview that I, I looked at again, um, and you just said it, you said fear and doubt are your constant companions. So you want to embellish? Because you, you seem pretty fearless in your creativity and use of color and everything is like, you know, just startling. So <laughs> how do, where does the fear and doubt play? Oh, well, the fear and doubt is um, what all, I think, I can't speak for all artists, obviously, but for me, it's just there, it's omnipresent, and it's not about slaying it, it's about taking it by the hand. So it's one thing if you're fearful and doubtful, and it keeps you from doing the thing, which happens a lot. But for me, it's sort of like, okay, fear and doubt, thank you for being here, thank you for protecting me, that's very instinctive, but are, there are children here, so I can't say it. what, how I, what I, I have a mouth like a, Anyway, so it's about um, moving forward from that place and working from that place and using that place. So yeah, it's a, as we get through, I'll tell you that once I get through the hard bits, the stuff that I find really challenging and that if they don't work, the painting is a bust. Oh, there's so much to say, oh my God. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay, we can, we, we can move forward because I, I, it will come out. Okay, okay. Well, so this one, to me, uh, kind of exemplifies, to me, there's like two words, um, if I can remember them, uh, tr <laughs> transparent, transparency, and transitions that came to mind. So, you know, there's transparency in the figure, the foreground is the background, the background becomes the foreground, and all this play with that kind of spatial thing. Yeah, um, this was a, I was looking at a, a bunch of paintings by Artemisia, Janileski, and uh, who my daughter introduced me to. Where are you, Emily? There's Emily. Um, we'll talk about that too. But um, this is so the the transparency is that whole idea of the fragil our fragility, and how easily penetrable and porous we can be. Again, as women, I'm sorry, guys, but it's so women centered. It's so. It's an experience I feel like we share and we live. And I wanna celebrate it, I wanna honor it. And the transition part is that kind of, is the, is the resilience. So fragility, resilience, that push-pull and the resilience that we have with our skin. And the fact though that we're only one membrane away from what surrounds us, when you think about it. so. Some of us are more thick-skinned than others. I happen to be a thin-skinned person. And so just playing with that in and out-ness of our being and just kind of that idea of vaporizing or and coming back together. Thank you, Ed. Ah, so this is Survivor. She's an early piece. In my studio that I have at home, I have a, there's a, um, there's a wall space and I have a skirt hanger and I hang, sometimes if I, if something's not going quickly, because I only work at one, at, on one piece at a time. So this one was just, I could, she wasn't coming. I had, so can I get up? I'll, I'll just talk <laughs> loudly, which, so if you look at her dress, Here's a tail. There's a chameleon's tail in her dress. So I started out with the chameleon's tail, and then I, um, and then I 
and she was hanging on the skirt hanger and she just it wasn't, it wasn't happening. And I thought, oh, I'm making another chameleon. I like this palette. Something's wrong here. And then I made a tree and then I made human hands. This is the first time that I ever went here full woman. <laughs> this was it. And I call her survivor because she survived all my doubt and my fear. And she also hung there for well over a year as, as just a tail. <laughs> and then all of a sudden it was, oh, I think we might be able to work with this. And so then she came in. Wow, that's beautiful. Well, you mentioned nature. There's, there's obviously, it, it's, every piece has nature in it, right? I mean, there's the nature of the woman and the nature of the environment she's in, but um, there's birds, there's trees, there's sky, there's always, that seems to be a constant. Oh right? yeah. They're never in a, like a room, really. Right, right? Yeah. not a lot of interiors, although yeah. we will get there too. But um, if you'll notice too, the red dots are like a halo. So a lot of my work has that halo reference. Could be hair, could be a halo, could be a moon. So look, f it's kind of fun to look for it in, in different ways. And that also is about elevating the woman, just sort of the sacred aspect of us, because we're just so amazing, so. <laughs> And this one more, uh, uh, dots or stars, I guess. Yes. And, uh, yeah. Dress. This is called 16. She's in, she lives in Manhattan. Um, this is my, uh, this was from a, uh, a photograph of my daughter, not Emily, um, who is wearing a, um, a leotard and looking just, <laughs> you know, just like, ugh, ugh. And um, I gave her a lizard and it was, it's just such a great photograph because she's decked out. She's, a, she's performing and she's so uncomfortable with that and she's so comfortable with herself. And so she just kind of slouched and she did that and I just loved it. But what I was gonna talk about that, that I wanted to hold off until we got kind of here is about problem solving. So for me, being an artist is, well, it's a couple, well, it's many things, but it's, it's, it's no one can tell you what to do, which I love. So I'm the boss and if I, yeah, that kind of thing. And, but also problem solving. So there's constantly problems to solve. And because I don't really plan things out very well, very much, it's not very well, I'm a good planner, but I don't like planning my pieces out that much because there's something about the spontaneity of where is this going that really excites me. And also being on that edge of where is this going and I'm not sure I like this. <laughs> so I, there was, a, there's a, by the way, there's a lot of Crayola crayon in these early pieces. So I should say that it's almost like a batik effect that happens. So I'm just, I'm not melting it. I'm just using my Crayolas, just bearing down on them as I'm, and I do that first and then the watercolor goes over it. And so that skin that's all kind of bumpy, that's that texture. And I was using Crayolas constantly because it's the long story of how I got into this while I was editing. So, but it's too long a story. So, um, so I had a problem because her, she was a lot of skin and I'm not comfortable with the flesh tones. And this was back when Crayola was just the white ladies, you know, with the, you know, it, there was no, uh, not this wonderful array of beautiful women of color that could be made by little kids when they draw. So I gave her fishnet. I went back in, she, she got remade a few times and this is what I ended up with and somebody came in and said, oh, I love that and I wanna buy it. So that worked really well, so. Um, so before you talk about this, I just have, do you ever get to the point you're working on a piece like this and you're working on your 17th leaf and go, why did I start doing leaves? <laughs> oh my God, I've got 19 to go. Why did I ever? <laughs> okay, that's such a good, God, I love it. Um, I love tedium. I do, as an editor, oh, you gotta love tedium. So um, I love it. I, it too, so thank you for that because another thing that I love about creating is getting lost in it. And when you're making that 12,000th leaf, <laughs> it's like you're just, it's meditative. It's just, I just love it. There's something so peaceful making about it. 
and again with the chameleon. By I, I should say that these colors are way more, um, maybe not lurid, but a little more saturated than they are in the real piece. But um, but you get the idea. And those veins on the leaves are just they're colored pencil. I'm using a lot of different materials that just come to hand. I use graphite. I use watercolor, I use gouache, I wood burn sometimes. If I've got a paper that's really high rag content, I'll burn into the paper. So there may be a photo of one of those. But anyway, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm talking too much. Uh, uh, yeah, there's another World Course Nature. Yeah. You've got in the sky, the sea, the floral, the birds. Are yeah. ba I, I, birds are a common theme. And also I notice hands. That was particular. There's some, some artists are afraid of hands, right? Guilty no, but as charge. <laughs> yes, that's, remember when I was talking about what the hardest parts are, and once we get through that, it's like, <sighs> so it's hands and faces. And this was an ad in the New York Times for a charity. This woman, young girl, actually, she's a young girl, in tatters, just in tatters, um, like this. Um, and she just had this, um, blue dress and she had this just beautiful haunting face and I just wanted to paint something to honor her and she, she lives in um, Lansing, Michigan <laughs> and she, so I gave her a crown and I just wrote and robed her and this was one where as I went up, I started at the, I started at the bottom and I just thought, what's the next layer? What's the next layer? And I was using, I mean, I had, from having little kids, but now they're all grown, um, I have like a trove of Ranger Rick magazine. <laughs> and the yeah. photographs in there are great. And so I was just taking bugs and other imagery from those photographs, because I work a lot from photographs. Yeah, and and I just oh, worked up, yeah. No, you mentioned in the interview, um, I mean, we saw a whiteboard, and we, people were interested in, you know, your, the process and all that. But you do, you collect, you have this whiteboard, which is kind of an inspiration board, right? Oh, that yeah, be? you were in my studio yeah. and saw that. Uh, that's a, sort of after the fact. Uh, it's, it's um, yes, I do, I collect, I have files that say chameleons, birds, um, buildings. So, and I just file stuff away when I, when I see it and I tuck it away and then when I'm ready to do a new painting, I go through all kinds of stuff and just winnow until something hits and, and I'm like, okay. So this is called Blue Moon. And um, she was taken from a photograph. Again, there's the moon and around her head. And I was playing with the idea of color and just color neutral sort of let's, so she's blue. Well, you said, I think you've, whether when we talked, you said she asked to be blue. Yeah. What does what does that mean? I need to be cobalt blue. <laughs> well, it's sort of like well, I can I can make her a person of color, um, and I find that much more interesting to paint than um, a white flesh tone. It's just much more interesting and to me. Um, but she just needed to be blue, and uh, I just wanted to take the risk again. Fear and doubt were like, what the what really? <laughs> And when it went down, it was like, ah, oh, it was terrifying. Terrifying, I was hyperventilating the whole time. And um, it was, I, I think it worked out pretty well, yeah. And all those little triangles were so much fun to make. I just, ah, <laughs> they're all painted in. It's like, I just love it. And you what, you told me you, you watch TV, some. Oh, the TV's on the whole time. Listen to music, or they, they need peace and quiet. Yeah. They need to be locked in a vault somewhere to do it. But you you watch TV, right? When you, yeah. Or listen to TV. Guilty is charged again. Um, I'm very shallow. And <laughs> I like, and I just, so I've got it on. I won't even, at the risk of being political, I won't tell you what I'm watching, but you might be able to guess. And it's on. And sometimes, I mean, there was, an, there was a, a moment where I was weaponizing my women. Um, and you might guess what was going on in our country at the time, but I was giving them spears, <laughs> shields, knives. One has a hammer. Um, <laughs> and they've got smiles on their faces. <laughs> One has a battle ax. Um, and it felt so good. It really did. And yeah, so 
Ah, this ah. So this lives in a house in Ridgefield. Hello. And I started doing, I thought, well, okay, woman, 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 occasionally a chameleon to clear my artistic palette. I would do at least one chameleon a year just to bring back the, yep, I still can do the chameleon. So then I thought, why not more than one woman? Why not? So this was from a painting by Kirshner that I saw at the Neue Gallery, I believe, in Manhattan. And I never, I don't take from paintings, but I mean, this is so not the painting I was looking at. I just like to play fast and loose with what I'm looking at. So this is my brilliant friend. This is what it's called. It's about the friendship of women, and I'm very, very interested in the friendship of women, friendships between women. This is called Ode to Faith. One of my artist idols is Faith Ringgold. And so this has a double entendre, and this could be her daughter, this could be her inner child. This could be her conscience. Um, and it's with her. And it's on her coattails and drafting her or inspiring her forward, but definitely with her in a really good sense. And it's very um, uh, it, it's very referential of, of Ringgold. So yeah, that was And the hair idea. almost looks Maybe I'm taking this too far. Botanical. I mean, there are tendrils and there's like yeah. root branches and roots and yeah. that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like. I mean, a painting gets repainted every time someone looks at it. I, I I know that sounds maybe trite or weird, but I really feel that way. It's it's um it's renewed every time because somebody's seeing something in it that you just you just don't see, and I've never heard that before. Thanks for that. <laughs> There's probably a reason. <laughs> There's probably yeah. a good reason. This is sisters, and this was a tough one. Um, this is very, very recent, and I almost gave up on this a whole bunch of times. The color is not my usual color. Um, uh, problem solving out the wazoo, not working out, and I just wanted them to be sisters, and but not literal sisters. So we all have those friends. If we're lucky, we have one. Um, and I, uh, one of the things that I said about this is just that I'm wanting to paint this community of women that I would like to be around. I would like to talk to them. I would like to hear what they have to say. And so the idea of leaning on each other, that whole, you know, just when we call each other or text each other or email each other, or just when we're having coffee, it's just, there's nothing like it, that thing, that, that fizz that happens. And it's really, really important, really important. So So you're creating people, who, like you said, you want to be around, a yeah. circle of friends almost, that, yeah. that are just kind of your diverse yeah, yeah. universe of... Yep. So more. pillars, again, that whole, and the idea of the strength of the trees. Yeah, and so... Um, some people have asked me about my, so I love dressing my women. Um, I, I love, I grew up with clothes. My father was in that business. And so my grandfather before him and very interested in what people are wearing and very appreciative of what they're wearing. You guys look fantastic, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so I have a huge, in my studio, I have a lot of bookshelves and a lot of the books are about, um, they're on costume from all over the world. So I am not a well-traveled person. I never had the money to travel. And, and so um, somebody was saying to me just today, you're traveling in your mind. And yes, that is what I'm doing. So these, when I'm going through these books and looking for textiles that really interest me, um, they, some leap out and then I play around with color. Sometimes they look very, most of the time they look very different from what I started with. I'm not interested in, slavishly copying anything. It's just not what I'm into, so. I mean, these could be, we talked about this briefly but before, but I mean, these could be concept sketches for Broadway, for costumes, for a uh, Broadway play. Uh, I mean, you've never, have you been approached to, to design clothes or costumes? Or? No, no, yeah, but I do have, um, some of these are fabrics um, because someone was very interested in licensing my work and so 
Some of them are puzzles, some of them are phone cases, some of them are fabrics. Oops. And this person uh, is very knowledgeable about how to play with my work, and so she'll isolate a moment. Ah, so this is called Sisterhood. This was a play on, an, on a medieval painting, and I threw birds on their heads and, and gave them color, because they were all white ladies. And um, again, the fishnet and a tattoo. There's a tattoo. My daughter's tattoo is under there. You see the Fibonacci? The Fibonacci all the, on the lady on the left. There's, it's just in the corner. Um, and yeah. So that was some, something really different. And I thought, oh, can I tart it up a little more? Like, do I really just make a sky out, out there? Like, do I sell out and just make blue? And then the answer was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> To do that so yeah and I do a lot with my fingers so when you see the clouds it's me with my finger and sometimes the hair is all my finger okay so revelations so an interior right so again fear doubt oh my god oh my god but I get this great magazine called world of interiors it's wonderful it's this really lavish it's from England it comes in this <laughs> bag it's like someone's delivering like roses to me every time it comes anyway there were curtains in there and I thought oh so I took um no oh, Bob and Jane you gave me this book so that's that pattern that's on the jacket of the book and um then I a local wallpaper store was oh was like getting rid of their swatches and their wallpapers and there were books of these things so the thing on the right was just a from a an upholstery fabric book and so I took that on there but then there's the teacup from my grandmother and anyway revelations is about the revealing of the open curtain I'm not letting you talk but there's at all. still it's not <laughs> I didn't do this work but there's but there's still a little triangle of sky there's still that yeah. That's Hint true. of the outside, what's outside. Yes, right. Nature still pokes yeah. its head in, right? Yeah. yeah. And those are all my, my um, mother-in-law's teacups. Ah, uh, where do I begin? That's in, um, in Greenwich right now. It's in a gallery. And um, it was from a Vogue, a book of a Vogue book, and it was a mannequin. So she, and she had... The, the, way it, the way she had the fan was, the face was pa is painted on the fan, and, the, and her head was just off. So it was just this really cool thing, and I thought, oh, that's so relevant to what my whole thing is. My whole jam is that. So, and then, again, where do I begin? Where does her dress begin? There's like a perfect, there's dots, but she's just part of her surroundings. Well, wellspring um, is totally from my head, <laughs> my crazy head. And the doubt and fear there was that yellow in the background, which is called Oriolene yellow. And it's really bilious. I mean, it's, it's really out there. It's not for the faint of heart. It's not for everybody. But it's in there. It's, you can see it in the show. And it's a big piece it's a different shape from what I'm used to making and I just wanted this woman to be here and she is and there's the dot oops gotta go back one okay. oh, oh <clears throat> miracles um sh yeah this was from this was from a Richard Avedon photograph black and white photograph of Fanny Bryce and she was in a full tux and I thought we need a skirt, because then we could put stuff in it. And then, so that's all my finger. The clouds are all finger, finger, finger. The whole background is finger, finger, finger. And then a very stylized butterfly uh, from some plate, I think, that I found. And so I gave her a red vest. I gave her color. And there she is. And she's really big. It's one of the biggest paintings I've done. She's pretty towering. She's also in Michigan, yeah. So I just noticed, well, I have noticed before, but the recurring dots, your uh, signature has three little 
What are those? Okay. Do we have enough time? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's just a very short... Okay. So, when I started, I was dating my work. So, and I thought, why am I putting the year? Like, who does that? I don't want to do that. Why am I dating my work? So, I went into my framer and I said, stop the presses. I need to, you know, can I just erase? And I took my eraser out and it just smudged the living hell out of the bottom of the painting. And I was... <laughs> I was really upset because I'd finished the painting and um, and they had, I said, do you have any paint? And so they had watercolor and I took my finger and I just went doom, boom, boom with my finger. And then I thought, ooh. And you couldn't see anything. It was great. It like, it worked. It was the solution. Again, problem solving. And I do it, I do it on every painting now. It's just, it's, it's literally my signature. It's my fingerprint. Can't get more siggy than that. And I do it on my prints, too, that I sell, because it's just a, a moment of original touch. So There's a lot of circles in this one. Yes. This is a <laughs> lot of metallic paint, which does not translate onto, onto the capture that my printer creates when I bring it to him. But um, I just wanted to do these mandalas. I wanted to do history. I found this woman with this great, with this amazing hair in probably Vogue or Vanity Fair. And a lot of my women float. There's a, a lot of times, there's no ground under my women. And I, it's like part of a recurring dream, I think, that I have of just floating. So that's, you know, that kind of insubstantial aspect of the tectonic plates are, are constantly moving under our feet. It's sort of like, but wait a minute, but wait a minute. But wait a minute, I need to get my footing. I need to get it. I need, wait a minute, wait a minute. It's just sort of that thought of it's always changing and just like make it stop, but um, and, it doesn't. And she's balancing on that on the red little dot. ball. Yeah. Floating. So, um, yes, so this is if weapons were flowers. And so, again, a comment, but it's a... Uh, it's about the strength of women marching through, in this case, war or our lives. Some of us are at war all the time in our lives. We're fighting battles all the time, very successfully. Yeah, it takes a toll. But so the, the whole idea about what she's wearing is, again, from different books. I mean, it's, it looks Eastern European. Some of it is. Her skirt is a is a, um, it's a a Tibetan garment. It's from no wait, it's from southern China actually. It's from yeah, and so I just and then the background is just all stylized me, and she's got an Uzbeki a Uzbeka, Uzbeki Uzbekistani hat, so from different places. Joy. Again, fishnets, halo, but, umbrella. And then did you have to fight the impulse not to put flowers and <laughs> yeah. chameleons and things yes, in the background? It was, like, <laughs> it was like, no, no. But again, and this sounds weird, they're kind of talking to you. They're like, no, no, I'm done. This is enough. We could just maybe put it away <laughs> and just bring it over to the printer and get it framed. Mm. So, yes. That's great. Oh, also from a black and white Cecil Beaton photograph of a woman um, in the rain looking in profile, but I like my women to look out like a lot of the time. So, yeah, so that's from a black and white photograph. This is Uplift, and I got all the way to, <laughs> I got, so these are all flowers from gardening catalogs. It was like, I started with the flowers and I just couldn't stop. I just couldn't. So again, the halo. And, um, but it was, you know, that realization of what do I do with her pants? And then, oh, I can see her leg through her pant. And then it was, oh, I kind of like the diaphanous aspect of this pant. So let's stick with that. And then what do I do with the bottom? I've got all this room on the bottom. I had all this room on the bottom. What am I gonna do? So that was a moment. It was like, oh, I've never done a skyline. What? Do I, how, and I'm not comfortable with that. Don't make me, don't make me do that. <laughs> but 
I did. Okay, I don't think we should sort of speed through a few of these so okay. we can uh, get Speeding questions. Speeding again, insubstant, you know, and the fingers with the hair. And this is all around us. You can keep going, it's okay. Fine. Yeah. Ah, uh, Wonder Girl, National Geographic photograph. She's not holding carrots, she's holding something else. And then I put a paintbrush in her hand. And then I invented trees and weirdness. And then the halo thing. Oh, breakthrough. Okay, so this is wood burning. I would, this was, that back portion is um, metallic paint and then I wood burnt into it and it sort of embossed it. And the fumes were not so much fun, but it really worked. And, um, and I perforated her cap and my framer, this sounds truly tacky, but I swear it works, put like a mirrored surface under it so that you could see that it was perforated. There were actual holes in her cap. And this was from, um, they had just opened the Islamic wing at the Met. It's not called that anymore. It's a much longer name, better name, I think. And, um, and it was a jug. It was a black, it was a man with a mustache bent like that, bent like that with a sword. And I'm not so into swords. So I gave her a flower and I made her a her. And I gave her a little, yeah. Okay, so this is called Roller Coaster. And um, yeah, she's big. <laughs> yeah, it's big. This is called State of Wonder. And this is Adeline Morel that you're looking at. She was a salon, salonista. She was a salon keeper in the 30s. This is also a Cecil Beaton black and white photograph. And kind of like Jonathan, kind of like a companion piece to what you have with Edith Sitwell. Um, and it's metallic paint and crayon. There's a lot of Crayola in this piece too. She lives in Ridgefield. I like the way the um, pattern on the dress turns into her, grows into a tattoo on yeah. her body. Yeah, so. so there she's tatted here yeah. and on her wrist she's tatted a little bit. And this is the last one. Um, this is called They, and I did want to say a word about um, our influences, like in our lives, just artistically or otherwise, how our children influence us. And um, um, my son is transgender, and uh, he's a magnificent human. And when I started this piece, um, I started, this was a, <laughs> the photograph was of this woman in this bright red satiny dress and a big hair and I started doing that and I thought, well, no, not the red. And then um, with the fingers, I started doing the hair and I just stopped because I thought, oh, and I leaned on her. I was using graphite to make, to, I started making the fishnet and I leaned on the side and it smudged the painting. These circles are all graphite. And then I thought, I'm just gonna work with that. So I made a halo a graphite halo with my finger. So it just, one thing led to another and that came out and so um, I call it they and it's just honoring my son. And um, my daughter has been a huge, huge artistic influence also because she's incredibly creative but she's also indomitable and courageous and she's been my true north and I wanted to honor her too. So um, I just, they're with me all the time. Their words are in my studio and their images that they've made are in my studio. And I just, you know, they're, they're the reason that I'm doing what I'm doing. And they were so patient during the time when I was making art all around my job. So patient, because I'd come home and paint. So. That's it. Bob's your uncle. Oh, is that the, I think. Yep, I think that was it. All right. Thank you, Nancy. You're welcome. <laughs> so if there are any questions, we ask that you step up to that microphone because this is being recorded, so your voice will only be heard if you're on that microphone up there. So please feel free to walk up to the microphone and ask a question, if anybody has one. No, because he can't hear you, only the mic, because it's being recorded, so you have to talk into the microphone. <laughs> It's very good to see you. <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. I so enjoy 
Oh, the mic's not on, I don't think. Mic's not on. Hi, Nancy. Hi. <laughs> I so enjoyed your talk and you. looking at your images. It's fascinating. Um, the question that I have is about your prints and how you transition from your paintings and when do you decide that you'll make a print of a particular painting? Oh, you're, you are honoring me with something that doesn't happen. These are not prints in the usual sense. These are Gicle prints. They're super, super high resolution that I could never make with what I have photographs. So when I'm finished with a painting, I bring it to my printer who's in Danbury. They're incredible. And they make soup that you would not know the difference between these. They make a gorgeous paper. And I, I just hand sign them. And so I'm not, I'm not using a printing press. I'm not going to a printer. I'm not doing that. So I'm you, not that artist. I'm, I'm just painting. Do you do an addition? Yeah, I do additions. Yeah. yeah. They're all additioned, absolutely. Yeah. I've come, I've made, I'm making smaller additions now. So 50 is my usual number, so yeah. And then if there are larger prints, 10 is the addition, yeah. Well, thank you and thank congratulations you. again. Yeah, I love knowing that it's, there, it's so much, so much, for lack of a better word, easier to sell my work knowing that I have a document of the work, that I know that this, this thing is, looks like the original so much and I can refer back to it anytime I want that is just there. So it is uh, print on demand, and but it's, it's not schlocky. It's like a really good high quality print that I feel comfortable selling myself, not online. I don't do that at all. It's just, a per I like the personal connection. I really, not to disparage anyone who's selling online, good on you, that's incredible. But I, I just like that, you know, I like to have the conversation. I have one more question, which I may regret, but um, <laughs> is there somewhere at the bottom of a flat file a drawing of a man? <laughs> yes. I, I call it the ugliest painting in the world. It's, it's a man. I swear to God, it's a man. It is so awful. It's so cringeworthy. It's just humbling to look at it. It's so bad. <laughs> and, and he's standing on a turtle. He has wings. It's real bad. And then there's like a fish in there somewhere. <laughs> it's so putrid. And yes. Oh, and I also have another one that I really like, actually, and that's on a wall in my house. Dielocanth. It's a play on coelacanth, and it's a man with a fish. And again, I can't say what I call it because there are children present, but um, I really like the piece. And I keep going by it and thinking, I want to turn her into a woman, him into a woman. I do. <laughs> Um, but I haven't, so yeah, there's, yeah. Men are complicated. <laughs> Is anybody else? Anybody else? I, know, right. I talked a lot, guys. Thank you so much for being so Thank patient you. with me. Oh, oh, okay. Somebody. Oh, it's Ty is going to ask a question. Oh, cool. You may have to lower I the like microphone, this but, or take it out of the stand there. He's got a set of pipes on him. He can, <laughs> yeah. Hi, Ty. Hello. Thanks for coming. Why does almost every picture have a bird? Why does almost every painting have a bird? Um, for me, birds, do you like drawing birds? Do you like making birds? Yeah. Yeah. Um, they're about freedom. They, they're, a, you know, just that whole idea of, you know, that, you know, when you're a kid, I feel very close to, my, to being a kid a lot of the time. And like adults are always telling you what you need to be doing. And I like the idea of painting the thing I want to be. So I'd like to be a bird. I mean, I, I would like to be able to just fly around free with no one saying, you've got to finish your dinner that you really don't like that I made for you and wish you would eat and taking personally that you're not finishing. Or you have to wear that blue shirt that you hate because it goes with the other thing and we're going out and we want people to like us because we're wearing nice things. So I like the idea of just flying free in 
And I also just like painting birds. And again, Ranger Rick magazine, I'm just, I'm just saying. Or your big back, my big backyard. Great, great photos of birds. And I, co I copy. That's what I do. I copy and then as it's like, well, you wouldn't know this, but it's like doing ballet before you do modern dance. It's sort of like you get the fundamentals down and you can fly free then. You can, you can do it. All right. I think that's it. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. I appreciate it. <laughs>